When I first moved here in 1962, of course, I didn't know what was going on then. I was only two years old, but Kelowna was about 15,000 people. And now you could argue, if you, if you count West Kelowna, that we're almost 200,000 people. And that growth has been dramatic, it's been very quick, and it's been very ad hoc. There haven't been a lot of policies in place to ensure that that growth has been sustainable. I've been part of an international group of scholars who've been very interested in studying sustainability in its broader context, and in particular interested in studying the impact that recent transformations mm -hmm. in social relations in particular spaces uh, that have occurred through the adoption of neoliberal policies, both social and economic policies, and how they've really changed the world and had a, a really negative impact on sustainability. In no overall perspective, I think the, the Okanagan Valley is at a point where it needs to think about its policies around, politics around uh, affordable housing, because I think that this is the overall issue that many societies are faced with today, and Okanagan Valley is, is definitely one of those. But one of the special things for me visiting the Okanagan Valley is this extremely car dependency. And it's not, as I said, it's not a big surprise, but it's still experiencing how it's actually more or less impossible doing anything without a car. It's, it's one of these things that really makes an impression on me. I think the future is always open. I mean, there, there are always possibilities out there. I don't think it's about looking back, but maybe it's about looking forward and then maybe looking at some of these older ideas and see how can we, how can we play with these, these ideas in a, in a new context, in this new context. And that, there are definitely a lot of ideas from Scandinavia that can be played with, but also in, in the Canadian society. I think it's possible, but I think one of the very important things is that we can't think that it's something that we can do overnight because we got used to and we planned our societies in a way that it's so car dependent and the reason why I say we did now is because this is actually also how it's going on in a lot of Danish cities. I'm from Copenhagen and I do a lot of research on cycling and Copenhagen is special in a Danish context because this is a city where a lot of people cycle but in the rest of the country people are also really dependent on their cars. Kelowna ironically is one of the most car dependent cities in in Canada and it's also one of the has the highest bicycle use that's about a little less than three percent so it's easy to be high but you know that there's a lot of potential here when we look at all the bike paths and we look at people moving here and riding bikes around in the summer you know there's a lot of potential here and if we could just get people using transit and if we could get city council starting to think ahead about mass transit especially some kind of train based transit now instead of 20 years from now when it's going to be really expensive, uh, we've got we've got some options available. So I'm hopeful. I'm not optimistic. <laughs>